Welcome to Talk Purpose and Truth with Eden and Kim, shifting you into higher consciousness. The show that elevates, uplifts, and encourages listeners to grow, heal, awaken, and evolve. Eden and Kim include bold topics, special interviews with inspiring guests, intuitive readings, channeled messages from beyond, including celebrities, hot topics to expand your awareness, and time for questions from the audience. Tune in for unprecedented truth, authenticity, on purpose discussions, and magical moments. Have to interrupt you guys, and I didn't know if you channeled him before or after him. You reached out to me, but Sammy Davis Jr. is my godfather. What? what? Yeah. I, <laughs> was, oh my god! I just got. To I didn't you. know it at was, what point. To oh my gosh! Was, I swear to God, I didn't know that, and it was after. It was, was after. after. Oh my gosh! I have so many best shifts. Best. Right. He's my dad's best man in his wedding. Oh, no way! Oh my gosh! That's why he's connecting with us now. Cindy, we so have so here, much serendipity for you. When you were saying it, I was like, God, am I even on here? Because that's yeah. Oh, oh my, God. my gosh! I have no, chills wait, too. We have to. Okay, after Eden, after we didn't plan to do this, but after you, you Ooh. know what? I want to. I want to say this really quick before we introduce Cindy. So, our guest is really interesting because we got connected to her through our friend Brad and so I didn't know much about her except she's this amazing well-known producer songwriter and I thought wow okay she's and she's glamorous and she has good energy so I had a call with her told her our whole story about our podcast in Prince had no clue that she knew Prince and she's like oh yeah by the way there was like tons of common things related to her knowing Prince we'll talk about that more but that was another thing we didn't even know yeah, like, uh, yeah. He, I think Prince, because we've been connected to him for so long, I think he orchestrates our connections, and he brought us, through Brad, he brought us to Cindy. I think he was part of this. And maybe and Sam, Sammy, Sammy, Sammy too. joined in. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Cause, random thing ever, because why, you know, who would ever think that um, I would have the background with Sammy? No <laughs> way. I was like, okay, that's Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm blown oh, away. I wow. Know. <laughs> oh yeah. wow. Yeah, because okay. of all the uh, of all the celebrities I've channeled, and there's been many. I've, we've never heard from Sammy. I've never heard from Sammy. No. And, and it just happened to be the same week that I worked with Cindy, did a reading for her. You met yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a coincidence. Huh? <laughs> How fun. Oh, right. I oh. love it. Okay, okay, now you can introduce her. Yeah, and now I, I'll have to do another one for you, so hopefully he can come through and give you messages, oh, too. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to formally introduce you. Um, so the, we're with Cindy Cowan, and she's an award-winning film producer, and uh, she co-founded Initial Entertainment Group, IEG, in 1995. Uh, from its conception to its sale in 2000, IEG became a leading film production and foreign sale in and foreign sales company. Um, they had so many successes. Um, they had an Emmy nomination for Rent a Kid, an Emmy, a Golden Globe, and People's Choice no nominations for If Walls Could Talk, the coveted United Nations Award for Savior, and four Oscar wins for Traffic. I remember that's the one that stands out to me. That was an amazing movie. Yeah, I love that too. Um, so this year, Cindy has won an Emmy for Miracle on 42nd Street, Miracle on 42nd Street, a documentary featuring Alicia Keys, Terrence Howard, Larry David, and Samuel L. Jackson, to name a few. Wow. Uh, <laughs> upcoming, I just like, just, it's all fascinating. Upcoming projects include True Haunting, a supernatural thriller with Screen Gems, a music-based pr project with TriStar loosely based on a true story involving NSYNC. Eye in the Sky, an action thriller. Oh, and then this is something, I don't know if I'm reading this right. So is that first one, um, the the supernatural thriller, is that the one with NSYNC? No. Okay, close. that's why. I'm reading it wrong. So NSYNC is the second one, um, and it's called Eye in the Sky. No, that's the no. third one. <laughs> that's the third one, okay. This movie shooting in Thailand this year um, based on the first exorcism ever broadcast live on TV in 1971, true story. Um, wow. Came for the NSYNC biopic, loosely based on a true story of these girls that dropped out of college their freshman year to follow NSYNC around. So it's Girls Trip meets Almost Famous. And then we go wow. to this guy, which is an action thriller here in Los Angeles. Okay, that NSYNC one sounds 
ah, fun. <laughs> but they yeah. are, they all sound fascinating. Yeah, I know. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, there's there's so much more about you. Um, she's also venturing in unscripted television uh, with Seekers, a reality format show. Um, so that we can talk about. And then Maxim Magazine. Um, I guess you're doing do you're documenting the rebranding of Maxim Magazine. Yeah, we got the rights to Max that man. It's amazing. Yeah, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, so I would love to know more about you know what what are you most excited about that you have coming up? Um, is there anything related to kind of like the topics we talk about on here that our audience would be intrigued by and just well, would love to know more? So the audience and to your audience and what you guys are doing is the new um, kind of unscripted show that we're doing, which is called Seekers. And it's about seeking the light in a world going dark. And I travel all around the world. And what I started to notice was the modalities in different countries are also profoundly different. And right now, with the world going so dark, I think that anything that can keep you in the light, no matter how strange, how interesting, how unusual it is, um, people need to do it. So whether it's a simple meditation, whether it's going to do ayahuasca, whether it's going to a sound bath, whether, you know, th there's so many different modalities that are available. And so my hope right before COVID was to partner up with Russell Brand and go around the world and show these different modalities. Um, COVID has clearly stopped that. Maybe we'll figure out if there's a way we can do it just in Los Angeles because we can't travel. Um, but I think it's really important to show it. And so we've sold that. I can't say we've sold it to you yet, um, but it's a show that I'm super excited, much more than the film stuff to, to do. Mm -hmm. because there's just so many things like rebirthing and things that people don't know about, um, you know, that are out there. And so our big thing is just to show them. We're not going to take any point of view, um, but we're going to present them all to you. And I think I the, the timing is even better now for for that type of a show to oh, come yeah. out. Yeah, than it would have been before COVID or had we not have that, had COVID. I think people's minds are more open now. Um, they want, they need something like this. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's exactly, it's divine timing. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. Russ, Russell will be on board. Oh, and can travel it would be amazing we just you know it's stopping us because no country yeah will <laughs> yeah so there, there can be maybe different seasons with different places or something yeah. start with la <laughs> right? you know and there's by the way there's so many in la too yeah oh we know of a lot if you, need, yeah. if you need help we can help you find them because we, yeah, we're connected to so many of those people <laughs> i would yeah. love to be pointed in the right direction to any okay you know, and everybody um we really want to make this a great show that goes many seasons. And again, it's all about showing people all the things that are available out there and mm -hmm. a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. You know, Kim, That's Kim, you know, who, you know, who's coming to mind right now? No, so it's probably the same as in my head. Who, you know, my husband's name, but it's not him. Yes. Okay. That's yeah. In my head. Oh my God. <laughs> Eric. So do you remember Eric Knees from MTV? I don't. Okay, he was the host of The Grind, and um, he was on The Real World, but he he has a whole story of film. I've always been told if, if a psychic reads me, they usually come up with, well, you don't need to be your psychic as I am. And I, my friends can tell you stories where I, I've actually tried to push it away my whole life, um, more so because when I would get these visions, they were usually not good ones. I predicted death, I predicted illness. I predicted just, you know, car accidents. Mm -hmm. Who wants to do that? No. But, but all of my friends that, that know me have watched me predict them where I just get this feeling in my stomach and go, uh-oh, something really bad's about to happen. And then if I can sit and focus on it, I can say who it's about to happen to. And it's just been a strange thing that I've tried to suppress or tried mm -hmm. to open up so it's not just the things. Even it's interesting. I had a girlfriend over at my house the night before the riots happened here in LA and I couldn't get the feeling out. And I was like, Oh my God, something really bad is about to happen. And I said, this time I can't figure out who it is. Mm. And I sat there over and over and she'll tell you, I was like, and the feeling was just getting worse and worse, but I couldn't pinpoint who it was. And then the next day the riots happened mm. here in Los Angeles. So that was the first. Um, and she's like, Oh my God. And weirdly that night I said, pack a suitcase. 
and keep it by the door just in case mm-hmm. it fall the night before. So those are the kind of things that I think see. It would be better though if I could get some great things and tell people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, have you tried to like? Because that happens to both of us too. Yeah. And I, I try to put it out there and pray as much as I can to, to have things come with peace, ease, and grace, and you know that I want the positive healing things coming in. Um, Eden's has some pretty profound ones similar to yours. Yeah, yeah. And um, I have figured out a way to be in control of what comes in. Um, my grandmother was someone, she was a medium and intuitive psychic and, um, it's, so it's handed down to me, which is a great gift, but she would do the Ouija board and, uh, always get the dark, the negative energies. And she worked with uh, the FBI to help find missing children. So there was a lot of darkness around her work. Um, and I think it affected her in a very negative way. So I was always afraid of that. Um, And I think once we open that portal, it just, everything comes pouring in, good and bad. So we had to, um, she never figured out a way to let the light in and not the dark. But um, I think Kim and I together, we've worked for a long time on trying to get to that point where it's only the light. And I think it's working. I think we set these boundaries and we're able to now get that you know, to that point, to that place, um, and being more in control of what comes in. Because otherwise, it's just, like, so much, like, I used to see, like, a, like, black, flashes of black something fly before my eyes, and then something bad would happen right after that. So it it didn't even give me time to do anything about it. And then if I did have time, why would I want that information? I know, I know. That's why, for a while, I pushed it away. And then I went for a couple years without having any of it. And then I went to Africa and it all opened back up. It was like yeah. a portal of saying, okay, it's back. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm not as afraid of it as I used to be. And luckily it doesn't come back that often, but luckily I don't have that many people that are passing or having bad things happen. But it's it's strange. I, I remember before a director named John Singleton passed away, mm-hmm. I went into my office and one of my interns was John Singleton's um, like goddaughter and I I never know what comes out of my mouth and I had walked up to her and I had said I'm so sorry about John and she said what are you talking about he wasn't even sick oh later he passed away oh (laughs) my god just those kind of weird things yeah more than that I have to watch what I say because it yeah blurts out that's me (laughs) yeah I can relate to that yeah yep then we we don't know why you're saying it and I said what did I just say yeah yeah People would be afraid to talk to me sometimes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. But, yeah, it's always, you know, if we can get it to a place where we can try and use it for good, yeah. then, then we can accept it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, amazing. So, I, I mean, one of the last things I, I, now that you shared the Sammy Davis thing, can you just tell us a little bit about your connection? How did he become your godfather? So, he was my father's best friend um, when the – when Miami started being taken over by the mob way back when, my parents had opened up a hotel in Miami. Um, actually- For more information on Eden, go to EdenSuston.com. For more information on Kim, go to KimLifeCoach.com. Make sure to follow them on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Talk Purpose and Truth Podcast. If you loved this episode, you'll love every episode. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thank you for listening.